Hey, welcome. This is Nancy Slater, and the class is GR270, and we are working in our first textbook, which is, um, oh, let's see, what's the name of it? Adobe Illustrator Revealed, and it is by uh, Chris Botello. That's the first edition. All right, and what we're going to do is, um, in Chapter 2, we're going to be working with text. So the first thing that I'm going to do is open this 2-A1 the Illustrator file. I want to make sure Illustrator is activated. Then I'm going to go to File and Open. And I'm going to navigate out. I'm going to, I'm going to, going to listen. I got my summer voice on or my summer language on. I'm going to navigate out to the um, where I've got my data files saved. And the reason why I do um, put you through looking at this process as well, um, just simply so you can see how I do it, doesn't necessarily mean it's the best way to do it, but certainly is one way to do it. And now we're looking for the data files for Chapter 2, which I'm sure must be in here someplace, but hmm. we don't want that class. We want 270. And there is chapter 2, I hope, and there it is. And we're looking for 2-1. We're going to do a command O to open that. And in just a moment, you'll see that on my artboard, which there it is. And obviously nothing's there, but I'm going to rearrange the windows a little bit so we can see both the text as well as the um, document that we're working on. All right, we want to save this first as Barry Symposium. So we're going to do a file. Save as, and again we're going to call it Barry Symposium and underscore your name. And all of these defaults are fine. We'll just click on through that. Then we're going to go to View on the menu bar, and we're going to click Hide Bounding Box. And then if the bounding box is already hidden, you won't see the hide bounding box command. We're going to click the type tool, which is right here. And we're going to click anywhere on the artboard. And then we're going to type Barry using all caps. And by default, the new text is generated with a black fill and no stroke. You'll see that here. And I've got a pink um, highlight around my text that I just created. What that means is that I'm currently working in a text that, uh, or a typeface that they did not uh, work in at that time. So I'm going to see if I can figure out, maybe it was Marriott Pro, nope. So I can change that just to get rid of the pink highlighted box. That's kind of annoying to all of us. And there we go. All right, now we're going to get the selection tool, which is the black tool, or if you're using quick key strokes, it's a V. Then we're going to drag the text to the center of the artboard. I don't really know where the center of the artboard is because I've kind of got it messed around here with the textbook, but I'm going to see if I can find it. It gives me a quick keys or a hints for where it is, but <clears throat> all right, I am going to show you how I would find the center of the artboard here. Do you see that just little? All right, so that indicates this that's that center, and that indicates that that's that center. So if I put it right here, it should be just about right. All right, nothing that we do is that critical of that it be that um, that precise in this particular exercise, but there will definitely be projects that you work on over the course of your graphic design career that, that is um, um, certainly something that you have to be aware of. All right, you want to verify that smart guides are not activated. View. 
smart guides, which I'm sorry about that. I love smart guides. I used to hate them. I used to, they used to be a distraction to me, but actually after you get used to them, they're very, very, very helpful. All right, so the smart guides are not activated. Then we're going to go to, going to, go to window on the uh, menu. We're going to go to type. And then we are going to click on some panel, which I can't see. Okay, the character panel. And what that does is that brings that character panel front and center so we can see it um, as we work with it. When a type tool is selected, you click the character on the control panel to display the character panel as well, <clears throat> which is right here. I Personally, I like to have it right out on my artboard right beside me. And there are at times different options that you can see available right with the character panel that are not quite so easy to access here for some odd reason for me. Anyway, there it is. All right. Now we're going to click the Character Panel Options button and click Show Options, which you see that I just did. Now it says Hide Options because I've already shown them. Um, and then we are going to um, go on down the line here and work with the next couple of <clears throat> exercises. But in the meantime, it behooves you to read through this design tip, um, if, especially if you're planning on being a graphic designer. Uh, this talks a little bit about the history of designing letter forms. Um, that um, it gives you some ideas to what tracking and kerning is. And um, tracking, for example, is found here on your character panel. Kerning is here. And uh, tracking applies to a uh, series of letters that you have selected. So if, for example, I wanted to increase, and just normally you have to increase it pretty significantly before it starts to show. I'm actually going to make that a little bit larger so you can see it as well. <clears throat> Again, tracking that uh, refers to spacing and spacing to a specific number of selected uh, characters or words selected. And then kerning refers to the spacing in between two letter forms. And um, again, I'm going to reduce that pretty significantly so you can see the impact immediately. And that's tracking and kerning. All right, we are going to uh, format the text and um, I'm going to undo everything I just did so we can get with what the textbook is telling us to do here. You can see I have unlimited undos. It might just be easier to make it a zero in there, but I will go through the undos, which is command Z for those of you that aren't familiar with it yet. <clears throat> well, forget that. I don't have that much time. All right, so I'm just going to go to zero. And now it sets the kerning as a default. <clears throat> All right, so we've got that selected. We're going to click the font family here. Oh, and we are going to point to Times New Roman. That's alphabetically organized. And then we're going to click regular from the font style list arrow. This is the font style, and we're going to we have a number of different options in this particular typeface, and these do change based on what typeface you're using. Right now we're going to click regular. And then we're going to click the font size text box icon, which is right here. And we're going to type in 142 and press enter or return. And we are going to click the horizontal scale text box icon, horizontal being right here. And we're going to type in 90 and hit tab. And then we are going to deselect our work. I'm going to get my artboard hopefully in the middle here so you can see it. Oh, actually, I need to move this over. And then you want to compare your text to figure five <clears throat> or mine on the screen. All right, now we are going to select the text if it's not already selected. So I'm going to click and drag to highlight the text. And then using the character panel, we're going to click the tracking icon, minus 30. And remember that's icon. We're going to do minus 30. So that's basically what we just did, right? 
<clears throat> and then we're going to click the Character Panel Options button and click Show Options. Oh, we've already done that, and we do see the tracking. And then we're going to click the Type tool and click the cursor between the B and the E. And then using the Character Panel, we're going to click the up and down arrows in the Kerning text box. So if you go to the Kerning text box, you can change the value of that to minus 40. And like I said, I don't have all day, so I'm going to go over here. And they don't have minus 40, they have minus 50, so I'm just going to put minus 50 in and change that to 40 and hit tab. Alrighty. And this is a visual as to what we've just done. <clears throat> Not that, actually. That's something we're going to do. All right, then, using figure six as a guide, we're going to change the kerning to minus 20. What? Let's see if I can figure out what they're talking about here. Okay. All right, so between the B and the E, you want to put your icon or your cursor here, and that should be a minus 40, which we've already done. Between the E and the R, that should be a minus 20, which we have not done. Between the R and the R, we are going to put a zero point kerning. I don't really agree with that. I think that should be wider so they're not touching, but we'll go with what the textbook says. And then if we go with the, between the R and the Y, we're going to do a minus 120 point kern. And then we're going to select them all, <clears throat> and we're going to do a minus 30 tracking, which is already done. We're going to get the selection tool. We're going to click the paragraph panel name tag tab. And then we're going to click align center. And again, that moves it off almost off my airboard, so I'm going to move this over here a little bit. And when the text is center line, its anchor point doubles as its center point, which is handy for aligning it with other objects. So you'll see that this little center point is means center aligned. Um, and a line center button centers the text inside the text box only. It does not center it on the page. And then we're going to go to object on the menu bar. <clears throat> we're going to click hide and then click selection. So object, hide, <clears throat> and then selection. All right, the next thing we're going to do is create vertical type. So we are going to click on the type panel tool. Sorry, not the panel, the tool. And we're going to get the vertical type. And honestly, I don't ever use this. I'm not quite sure why um, most designers don't uh, do a vertical text alignment, but we are going to. <clears throat> uh, There you go, vertical type. And they retain the formatting attributes that were previously chosen. So we are going to get the selection tool and we're going to click and drag it over to the center of the artboard again. And then when any tool other than the selection tool is selected on the tools panel, you can press control if you're on a Windows or a PC uh, command if you're on a Mac to switch to the selection tool. All right, and we are going to change when, on number five. We're going to change the font size to 84. We have to go back to the character panel to 84 and hit tab. We're going to change the tracking value to minus 160.
and hit tab. And then you want to verify that both the horizontal and vertical scales are set to 100%. Have to change this one to 100%. And your screen should resemble figure 8 or mine on the screen and you will be able to see it as soon as I get this stuff out of the way. And there you go. Oh, we are going to delete the vertical text and save our work. Hmm. Oh, geez, sorry, that is definitely not what I meant to do. <laughs> I will be right back. You want to delete the vertical text on your Illustrator document and save your work. And I'll be back in just a moment to um, demo a couple more things here.